In today's power plants, with maintenance and operations costs soaring and manpower in short supply, finding new ways to save precious time and money are more important than ever before. One of the best ways to save is by installing and properly maintaining Conval clamp seal globe valves. Because of their modular design, which affords complete component interchangeability, our valves can be customized to match your service requirements. Globe pattern valves are designed for full-on or full-off service. When the globe valve is fully opened, the largest flow path possible is obtained. The back seat feature isolates the packing from line pressure, which increases packing life. Because the back seat feature is pressure assisted, meaning the system pressure enhances the back seat, it requires only a light torque to effect a seal. Always check the service manual for operating torques, being careful not to over torque. The seal will not be enhanced by over torque and the use of a cheater bar or other devices will damage the threads and the back seat. If your application dictates that the valve will not be operated in either full open or full closed position, a throttling valve is required. A standard valve should not be substituted since the use of an incorrect valve type is a major factor in valve failure. Packing adjustment or torquing is made prior to shipping and should not require field adjustment. If seepage occurs, the packing can be tightened by using the proper procedures. It is important to remember that after any packing adjustment, you should make sure the integral gland wrench is in the locked position. Conval offers three valve styles, the Y-globe, T-pattern, and angle body. The interior components are the same for each style. Moving up the valve is the seat, which contains one of the thickest cross-sections of cobalt material in the industry. The seat is designed with ample thickness for several resurfacing operations to ensure low life cycle costs. Next is the stem assembly, comprised of a disc, stem, and retainer. Continuing along is the bonnet chamber, with back seat, timing shim, if required, packing gland, integral gland wrench, and spring. The top section of the valve includes the threaded bushing, yoke assembly, clamp bolt, and lastly, the handle, washer, and lock nut. Once you have determined that a Conval clamp seal globe valve's efficient operation has deteriorated due to normal flow erosion, you must then disassemble and recondition the valve. Our valves are designed for easy and time-efficient inline service and repair. Conval offers a complete line of toolkits to service our clamp seal valves. A toolkit includes a yoke wrench, gland wrench, and allen wrench for your particular valve size. A refacing tool complete with a tungsten carbide cutter, a lapping tool, a bonnet lapping tool, and a repacking tool. For your convenience, we've included fine and coarse lapping compound and a tube of high spot blue. All this is stored in an easy to carry impact resistant toolbox. For ease of servicing, all tools are interchangeable with each valve body style. In order to determine what toolkit you will need, clamp seal valves are distinguished by a size code. It is this size code that defines which tool and parts are needed to repair your valves. The size code is stamped in two convenient locations. The size code is on the tag and it is also stamped on the bodies just below the threads and directly above the round raised pad where the steel heat code is stamped. Size codes are also listed in the clamp seal servicing instructions. Before beginning with the disassembly of the valve, remember safety. If the plant is operational, use the proper tag-out and lock-out procedures when isolating the valve. The wearing of required protective clothing, such as gloves, eye protection, and a hard hat are essential. Applicable safety requirements for your plant should be followed. And now we're gonna disassemble this clamp seal valve. The first step in the operation would be to open the valve to approximately halfway open. Next, you want to loosen the gland slowly to remove any possible built-up pressure.
Prior to disassembly, you want to note the match mark on the body to the yoke orientation. If no match mark is provided, make one prior to disassembling the valve. And now the clamp bolt can be loosened, removed from the yoke assembly, and threaded back in to the back side of the thread to be used as a jack screw against a hardened washer like a fender washer. Then continue tightening the clamp bolt to jack open the yoke. Then at this point, you take the yoke wrench, break the yoke loose from the body, and then continue turning it to remove it from the body. It's important when you're removing the yoke from the body to not scratch the bonnet seat with the internal parts. At this point it may be necessary to take a wire brush and clean the threads of the stem. The next step is to remove the nut from the yoke assembly and stem along with the washer, the fender washer, and the handle. We want to continue threading the stem out of the valve until a handle or adapter becomes disengaged. At this point, it may be necessary to clean these threads with a triangular file to allow it to continue to pass through the bushing. And then continue spinning the yoke, remove the yoke assembly, note whether or not there are shims provided with the valve. If shims are provided, they need to be removed from the bonnet and saved for reassembly. And then the bonnet slid down off the stem assembly. And now the valve is disassembled. Next, we want to inspect the four critical seal areas of this valve. They are the body to bonnet seal, the disc to seat seal, back seat seal, and the packing seal. We'll inspect these critical seal areas by using a flashlight to look for any unlikely damage at the bonnet seat. Then, moving down into the valve, the disc, and the seal area inside of the valve body, as well as the back seat bonnet nose, packing chamber surface, and the stem surface. Several types of body seat damage may occur. Wire draw, which is caused by not tightly closing a valve. Mechanical damage from weld beads or other objects being caught between the seat and disc. And eccentric erosion, which is common in drain valves. On the stem assembly, the disc sealing surface must be clean and free of wear. If damaged, the disc may be resurfaced on a lathe. On the back seat seat ring, the retainer may be cracked if the valve has been over torqued on the back seat. The surface of the stem must be free of pitting or corrosion in the packing contact area. Lastly, look at the bonnet for nicks or scratches in the back seat nose, the body seal lip, and the packing chamber surface. The next step is to remove the packing from the chamber. It's advisable to use a plastic or wooden dowel and not a steel packing remover or a metal packing remover that may damage the chamber wall. It's a good idea to soak the packing chamber in solvent prior to trying to remove it. Start by prying the first piece of packing out of the chamber with the plastic dowel. Next, invert the bonnet and push from the bonnet nose end the next piece of packing out of the chamber and then finally the second piece of die formed out of the chamber and then remove the first braided ring from the chamber and the chamber is now unpacked. 
The next operation is to repack the bonnet chamber. You want to use either cotton or latex gloves to protect the packing from oils from your hand. To pack the bonnet chamber, first place the bonnet chamber on the packing mandrel. Then install the first braided ring. Make sure the slot to the braided ring is 180 degrees away from you. Compress it with the packing tool and install the two die formed rings. Compressing each one as you go. And then finally, the last braided ring is installed with the slot facing you 180 degrees away from the original braided ring slot. Compress it with the packing tool. Remove the packing chamber from the mandrel and your packing is complete. A time saver used by many clamp seal valve users is to have pre-packed bonnets available. They put in a new bonnet and save the old one until they can repack it in the shop. This repacked bonnet then goes on the shelf for the next time. The next step in reconditioning the valve is seat refacing. This is done using the Conval refacing tool. Starting at the bottom, the refacing tool is comprised of a carbide cutter, a sleeve assembly, a housing assembly, the yoke collar, a feed lever, which is used to add pressure to the cutting head, a shaft, and at the top, a hex nut to accommodate a socket wrench. Taking the resurfacing tool in your hand, screw the adjustable shaft clockwise to its shortest length. Then unscrew the feed lever to within the last thread. Now carefully insert the tool into the body, being very careful not to scratch the bonnet seal in the body. Screw the yoke collar onto the body threads until they're hand tight. With your hand, press the cutter shaft down into the valve. When you've made contact with the cutter seat in the seat, now raise it up and you should have approximately a sixteenth of an inch play from the full up to the full down position. Screw the feed lever down into the housing until light pressure is felt. If the threads are used up before this happens, remove the tool from the body adjust the adjusting sleeve a little bit, put it back in the body, and try it again. The idea is to get the adjusting sleeve long enough so that the feed collar is driving the cutter into the seat, but not so long that the housing isn't firmly seated in the body. Attach a socket wrench to the hex head of the tool, turning it very slowly, and cutting only in a clockwise direction. Cutting in a counterclockwise direction will cause damage to the tool and the valve body. While you're turning the cutter, turn the feed lever very, very slowly, applying pressure on the back of the cutter head to the seat. Being real careful not to exert too much pressure, which will cause chatter and marks on the valve seat. Remove the cutting tool from the body. and then examine the seat with a flashlight. If the seal is uniform and shiny all the way around, you're ready to blue the seat. If refacing the disc is necessary, chuck the retainer portion of the stem assembly in the lathe and center to within one thousandth of an inch. Use a single point carbide tool with a fine feed and cutting speed of 30 to 50 surface feet per minute. Machine the minimum amount of metal necessary to clean the surface to 29 degrees plus or minus 15 minutes. First you want to clear shavings away from the seat and clean the body with a rag. We want to blue the seat to make sure we have a narrow, clean, continuous contact line all around the seat. This is the lapping tool used in conjunction with the stem to lap and blue the valve. The lapping tool consists of a lapping tool sleeve, a lapping tool bushing, and a lapping tool nut. Now we're going to assemble the lapping tool to the valve stem. First, apply the bushing or insert the bushing onto the lapping tool sleeve, 
install the valve stem that you're going to lap to the valve body and screw on the lapping tool nut. Make sure when you're screwing the lapping tool nut on you don't tighten it too tight as the disc needs to float freely on the front of the lapping tool. Also make sure that the lapping tool lugs are engaged to the slots in the back of the disc. We're going to blue the seat now to make sure that we've got a clean, narrow, continuous line all the way around the seat. First you want to apply a small amount of bluing compound to the disc. Spread the bluing compound around on this disc until you've got a very uniform, thin covering of bluing on the disc. Next, insert the tool into the body. Apply firm pressure down against the disc and seat. Remove the tool from the body and inspect your blue line. Make sure you have a clean, continuous contact line on the seat. If not, install the reseating tool and keep cutting. And now we're going to lap this valve. To start, you take the assembled lapping tool and on the disc of the valve stem apply a small quantity of coarse lapping compound. 120 lapping compound generally works well. It's important to apply the lapping compound right in the area where it's going to make contact with the seat. Then insert the lapping tool and the disc into the body. With firm downward pressure and a rotary motion back and forth, start to lap the seat. You'll continue lapping the seat for approximately two minutes. At this time, you should start to notice a bright, shiny ring both on the disc and on the seat. Once you've achieved this, then remove the lapping tool, inspect the seat, know that you have your continuous line, and then do this process all over again using a fine compound, 240 grit, until you achieve a shiny ring then and your valve is lapped. After lapping the seats with the coarse compound, you want to be sure to clean the tools and the seats prior to starting to lap with the fine compound. And now we're going to lap the bonnet seat in the body. To do this, you take the bonnet lapping tool and apply coarse lapping compound to the bonnet tool like we did with the disc. Assemble the bonnet tool into the body. Assemble a wrench to the lapping tool. And with light downward pressure and rotary motion on the wrench, lap this bonnet seat until all the imperfections are removed. Note, this only needs to be done in the unlikely event there are scratches or nicks in the bonnet seat. Once the process is complete, remove the wrench. Remove the tool, inspect the seat, and then repeat this process with a fine lapping compound, and then your bonnet is lapped. Before reassembly, make sure that all valve components are thoroughly cleaned. And now we'll reassemble the valve. First, Take the packed bonnet assembly and slide it over the stem assembly using the packing tool sleeve to keep the packing in place. Next, take the timing shims and reinstall them on top of the bonnet. It's a good idea at this point to put a little never seize on the shims. Next, assemble the bonnet assembly and stem assembly into the yoke assembly approximately halfway. At this point, you want to be sure that you've got nickel never sees on all of the valve threads except for the stem. It's important to remember that the clamp bolt torque, the yoke torque, the stem torque, and the gland torque, specific torques, can be found in Convalve servicing instructions. These should be referred to prior to final assembly of the valve. Now we can install the yoke assembly, stem assembly, and bonnet assembly onto the body. Note that the gland is as full open as we can get it, and the stem is at mid-travel. 
This prevents the packing from being crushed during the torquing of the yoke and the stem from being crushed against the seat during the torquing of the yoke. At this point, we'll torque the yoke up, making sure to come up at least to the match mark line or slightly beyond to ensure proper bonnet tightness. Take the clamp bolt out of the backside thread of the yoke, remove the fender washer, reapply nickel never seize to the clamp bolt. Reinsert it onto the right hand side of the yoke. Tighten the clamp bolt firmly. Assemble the adapter. The handle goes on. Fender washer goes on. Flat washer. Hex nut. And tighten it. Bring the valve stem to its full open position. Now the valve is fully assembled and ready for packing adjustment. First, with the Conval Integral Gland Wrench, tighten your gland. Next, with Conval's Dog Bone Gland Wrench, continue to tighten the packing until you come to the spec in the servicing instructions. At this point, cycle the valve stem full closed and full open three times. Repeat this procedure both on the gland and the stem three more times. Now your valve is ready for service. With reasonable access and the right tools and parts, this whole job should take about an hour for the small size valves and about two hours for the larger size valves. The Conval Clamp Seal Globe Valve is easy to service rugged and reliable. Once you've worked on the clamp seal valve, you'll never want to work on any other. Call us to set up a visit or to get help over the phone from our friendly, knowledgeable sales engineers. Please contact your local service engineer to set up a free maintenance seminar.